All right, let's talk about SQLI databases. So what I'll be doing is, I'll be first of all walking through the slides. Once I'm done with the slides, then we'll be going and taking a look at the practical implementation of how we'll be working with the databases, right? So let's first of all talk about what is exactly is SQLI databases. So if I talk about SQLI, it is actually a database which is required very little memory. It just requires around 250 KBs of memory in order to be housed by the device. It is something that is available on every Android device. So every Android device has inbuilt support for the SQLI databases. They are very lightweight and it is also something which is very important to know that they are automatically managed by the Android platform as in their creation, their execution, their querying up process is something that is automatically handled by the Android platform with the help of various APIs, right? And also of note, it is an open source software. So when, when I talk about SQLite, it is an open, open source database. SQLite is something that is available on every Android device. It supports the standard relational database features which are the SQL syntaxes, the transactions and the SQL statements, right? So it supports everything, all the SQL syntaxes, the transactions and the statements. It is just that a SQLite is a lighter version of SQL database. So most of the SQL commands do not run here out of the SQLite databases. So once we have SQLite in place, we need to first see whether a feature or a command is available on the SQLite or not and then only we will be executing those commands onto the SQLite database. So as you all know, what is the advantage? Very lightweight database, requires very little memory and the most of important of all is that the database is automatically managed by the Android platform. Let's talk about the SQLite data types now. The SQLite database majorly supports only these following data types. Apart from these data types, we have also one more data type which is called as BLOB or what we call as binary large object files, right? So if you talk about the data types you see, text, integer and real, they are the only data types supported by SQLite databases. So if you want to store some date type, what you need to do is you need to store it as text. If you want to store any long values, what you need to do is you need to store it as real. If you want to store any integer primary key, what you need to store it as as integer. But the important part here is that SQLite does not validate the data types by itself. So it is important that whatever data types we are making use of are the ones that are valid data types. It's not the database who will confirm all right, or give an exception whenever you try to create a database without a valid data type. Let me show you an example here. I have got a SQLite Open Helper browser here. And if you take a look, what I'll be doing is, firstly just run, run it up and I'll just drop a database, right, I'll just drop a database onto the SQLite database, open helper. You see this is a database of a cable operator app which I was making some time back, right, the set top box recharges and everything, it includes everything. So this is a database that is already present, right, if I go on, and add a new table to it. So I go on to create a table. I do want to give it a name. I say test. I go on to add a field, right? So the field name that I want to add is test field. If you take a look, I can also specify my custom data type. Apart from these data types, I can also specify my custom data type, right? So I chose to the custom data type given any random value. Select OK and click on create. Can you all see that? The field already got created. If I create on the table, the table also gets created. Can you see that? A test table got created with a field that is not a valid data type. Can everyone check this out? So what is SQLite doing? It's not validating the data type that I'm giving in order to hold the data. Can you all confirm this particular part with this example? 
you all can relate to it, right? It's just that it's not validating the data type. I could easily make any random input of the data type and it still accepted that. Anyone having any doubts, any questions in understanding that it does not support or say it does not validate the data type by its own, can let me know out of the chat window. Right, let's move ahead then. So how you'll be finding the database? It's very much a part of the application. So whatever this is the application, you go into the package under the data data folder. Under the package, you'll be having a databases file. Under that, you'll be having alarms.db or any db that you have created from within your application. So this is how it works out. So let's talk about SQLite Open Helper first of all. So it is a helper class that is used to manage the database creation and the version management. What we do when we what version of DB change what when version of DB changes, the SQLite DB object also changes? No, it's not the it's actually hasn't got anything to do with the SQLite DB object. Right? No, there's no dependency at all. Visualize there's no dependency at all. Because they are it's like one is handling the creation and operation of the database and what the other is doing is just playing on the data that is being held into the tables of the database. Right? So there is no dependency at all. So SQLite Open Helper, it is a helper class that is used to manage the database creation and the version management. What we do is whenever we extend the SQLite Open Helper class, we overwrite the on create and the on upgrade methods in this class. Whenever you access the SQLite database, it can be slow sometimes depending upon the complexity of the query. So it's always preferred that you make sure that least impact or say queries that run in recursion should be avoided when you are trying to execute SQL queries. And it is also recommended that you perform the database operations asynchronously, that is no acknowledgement needed. These methods are the ones that are automatically handled or called by the framework. As I have told you, whenever you increase the DB version, what will happen is it will automatically call the on upgrade onto it. So if you see, whenever you talk about SQLite Open Helper class, it is the database name and the version that gets passed in the constructor of the extended class. So on create method is the call, one that is called if the database does not exist. On upgrade is the one that gets called if the database version is increased. So if you see SQLite Open Helper class, given in, given in the name and the version in the constructor, you'll call get writable database and if the database does not exist, it will call on create. The images have to be swapped. If the database exists and the version is increased, it will call the on upgrade. It's just that the images at the bottom needs to be swapped. Anyone having any doubts, any questions? And this, these methods are called when we install app or first call for DB. It's just that Rajesh, for example, you have installed the application, right? What will happen is it will call on create. Now what you have done is you have uploaded another APK out of the Google Play Store. You download the latest version of the APK. What this latest version is will check is what is the database version already installed. So if the latest version of the APK ins cons has a higher version of the database version, what it will do is it will directly call on upgrade. If it is not there, it will again do nothing. If the version is the same, it will do nothing. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Any doubts, any questions? I'll wait for you to respond back, Rajesh. So it means the tables are created once we install the application. That's correct. That's very correct. And doesn't wait for a DB call. That's correct. All right. Arvind, I'll repeat it for you. Does user's permissions are needed to upgrade the DB version? No, it's not the user that has to permit 
uh, provide permission to us in order to upgrade the database version because uh, let me tell you about this. It's like I'm playing with the application's resources. It's not something that I'm asking the user for, right? So once I'm playing with something that is all within my application's permissible region, I do not need to ask the user about it. Once the user is already agreeing to download a newer version, I assume that is a request enough by the user. All right, Arvind wants me to uh, repeat on the constructor part. Arvind, let me tell you, whenever we extend the SQLite Open Helper class, what happens is that within the constructor, we pass on two values. One is the database name and the other one is the version. So if in my new application version, I'm increasing the database version, so it goes into the constructor and automatically calls up on upgrade onto the database rather than calling the on create. So that is what is being done with the help of the constructor name passing of the database name and the version. Any doubts, any questions, just let me know out of the chat window. All right, Prasanna, I hope your query also got resolved. You asked me, does user's permissions is needed to upgrade the DB version? All right, let's move ahead then. All right, what is this? I just got another query here. Right, right something from Fijula. All right, user one has installed my application, app upgraded version for DB. User two is installing this new and user one is updating the app. All right, great. So if user one on version upgrade is called and for user two, create method is called. All these methods are from Android, correct? That's absolutely correct. That's absolutely correct because if I'm not having any version, right? If I'm not having any version already installed onto the device, all right, Fijula, so what I'll be checking is, if it is version 2, I do not care. I do not care, I'll be calling on create into it because there is no earlier version installed onto the device. Are you getting my point? It's very much like a framework handling. If there is something, do something. If there is nothing, do nothing. Let's talk about... Then we have the SQLite database object. So what if my DB name has a conflict with another application DB name? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter Rajesh because what happens is the database resides onto the application's package name. So the package name should not be conflicting. Other than that, once you are into a subfolder and you are creating a subfolder of the same name, it doesn't matter at all. All right. It's, it only matters at the root level and the root level handling is done with the help of the package name. So you cannot have two applications with the same package name, but you can always have two different DB names under different package names. Two same DB names rather under different package names. So let's talk about the SQLite database. So the SQLite database takes care of all the insertion, updation, deletion, querying up, or closing and opening of the database operations with the help of this object. 